this small, very awkward entry was the very first thing that we saw when we purchased this late 1899 abandoned home. We bought this from four provinces away, sight unseen, and we had no idea what it looked like. No heating, no plumbing, no kitchen, no flooring, literally no working electrical. What a nightmare, but we expected that we were purchasing a house that needed everything. The space we're gonna work on today is this very small entry, which opens up to this grand hallway, which we love, high ceilings, original tin walls, original tin ceilings, but it needs a lot of love. And we've been ignoring it, thousands of times as we've come and gone through the house knowing that we're bringing building supplies and stuff in but now that the main functions of the house are done we're using this door less to bring in things like drywall and wood and so we thought that we would finally finally work on this small entry but small spaces are kind of tricky to work with and we're going to make it even more challenging because we're going to do this on a zero dollar budget we're literally going to take about 60 cents worth of supplies i picked up at our local little barn sale and use all the scrap we can come up with to create a huge impact on a welcoming space walking in the door. And since we've been struggling since we got here to decide what kind of style we're gonna go with, what's our color palette gonna be exactly, we've kind of been like going back and forth. I think we finally figured it out. Dopamine decor, we're just gonna do what we like, ignore all the trends and just make this house feel like a home for us. So that is the style for what we're gonna do in this entry space. So the goals for this space, like I mentioned, spending zero dollars at all. We want to be able to use everything we already have to create a different vibe in the front entry and also add some functional elements we've been missing. We have four seasons here. And sometimes I think we have four seasons in every day living here in Nova Scotia. So we have a lot of outerwear for winter, for rainy weather. We have boots. We work on the homestead here. So we all have a lot of gear, hats, mitts, you know, face coverings. We have no place to put them. So we're constantly putting them in kind of like reusable grocery bags, tucking them with a boot mat here. We just have some like temporary hooks we threw up just to be able to hang our jackets up. Nowhere for backpacks, just honestly nowhere to organize anything when you first come in we don't have a coat closet so in this space where i'm standing right now we're going to build a custom coat cabinet that's going to store a lot of the stuff that we're not using maybe in that season or to store all of our extras but the front entry we want a spot to be able to take our shoes off have a guest hang their jacket or sweater you know hang your bag on the hook and actually have a spot to put things but we want it to look homey and welcoming when you first walk in because these are tin walls, they can be a little bit cold feeling. So we want to warm this space up. So we're thinking wood tones and the beautiful rust color we've been using, you know, deep gray blues. We're kind of going with like the ranchy vibe. We want to just add elements that we really like. And that includes doing some really fun DIYs to bring this space into our own kind of personality. So since we're challenging ourselves to do this front entryway space, spending zero dollars and getting really creative with the things that we have around the house. And while I was thinking about different elements we could use to put into that space, like leftover scrap materials, any furniture that we're not using in other rooms of the house, loose pieces of painter's drop cloth, I was just thinking of like every possibility. I came up with a few things that I've picked up at that little barn sale down the street where I picked things up for like 10 cents, 25 cents, 50 cents. And it got me thinking about a lot of things that we deal with on our end while we're planning different elements to put into the renovation of this house. And I think sometimes, depending on what I'm working on in the house, I get a little bit of flack if I change my mind and I go and you know change a paint color on something. But I wanna show you what we really do and what a real life renovation, working on an entire house that was abandoned looks like. And so I'm not afraid to show you that I'm on my eighth color blue in the hallway. Oh, it's <laughs> white right now. But I'm not afraid to show you that I went through eight cans of paint to be able to figure out what we wanted in that hallway or six months down the road after living with a decision that we previously made that we don't like it and that we want to make a change. You know, sometimes like you just keep staring at something and you realize that it's not right. And so I actually learned something online a couple of weeks ago that I had never heard before. And it's something that I've tried to explain many times to different people, but never really had a word to describe how we decide on how we're going to decorate and make our home feel like a house or make our house feel like a home and that is dopamine decor. And so it's kind of like a new term that I've learned. I'm sure you've heard it online recently. It's kind of like a trending keyword for how you decorate your home, but essentially dopamine decor is decorating your house with all the things that make your house represent you and make you feel all the feels and just make it a space that encompasses everything that your family is all about. So I think that's the best thing for me to kind of have a word or a term to describe how we decorate 
because as you know, I love vintage things, but I love really antique things. And I love farmhouse and I love boho and I love rustic ranchy vibe and I just love all the vibes. And so we kind of encompass everything together and we just work as we go. And so having the term of dopamine decor means that I can add elements pretty much any way I want to and I'll just call it dopamine decor. So that's what we're going with for this front renovation. But one of the things that we're adding to this front entryway that I think a lot of people think is like not a trending thing or why is she going to do that? And that is shiplap. And I will be completely honest, I do not care if no one else loves shiplap because I think shiplap looks really cute. I live in an old captain's home, which I think like shiplap just kind of like encompasses that. I think it's kind of just a neat element to have. And when you're working with different spaces and you have old walls or old elements that you kind of need to cover up and revamp, shiplap is a really inexpensive way to be able to do that. And we're renovating an entire place here on a budget, a very small budget as we work our way through. And so shiplap is a great way to add character, keep it very like minimalist and easy to clean and also be able to hide some of those old house elements that you can't really fix or restore in a certain way, which one of those elements you're going to see in this front entryway. But shiplap, I think is like always something that I think I'm going to like. So some people will say it will be always on trend and some people say that it's totally going out of trend. Doesn't matter. It's dopamine decor. We're going with it for the front entryway. But there's a few things I want to add to this space that were kind of inspirations for what we're going to do in there. I wanted to put a little bit of vertical shiplap somewhere else in the house because we did put a little bit as the backsplash in the pantry. So to just kind of make things a little bit cohesive, I wanted to add just a little bit more somewhere else on the main floor without doing a lot of shiplap. I don't want like full shiplap rooms, but just add a little bit of character and make it flow and make that make sense. Um, so I'm going to do that using some one by fours that we have left over from the fencing. I'm actually not even, it's not even left over yet because we're still working on that one side, but I'm going to steal about 12 boards from the fencing pile and use those uh, for the shiplap background for something we're going to do for the coat room in the front entryway. But I found a piece of fabric that I think is adorable and I'll show you an element on it why I really, really liked it. But I think immediately you're going to see the color palette, how it has the blues and the rust color. There's even a little bit of my mustard yellow I like in there. And I think it's just a really neat vintage print, kind of homesteady. Obviously, I love that it's vintage. 50 cents for this piece of fabric. Someone previously turned it into some type of a Velcro curtain. So I have, I would say, close maybe a yard of fabric. But the one thing I thought was so neat about this is that on the little branded stitching, oops, I'm on the wrong side. Okay, so on the little branded stitching here, they didn't even cut off the ends. They needed all the fabric, I'm sure, for their curtain. And it says, Fifth Avenue Designs Incorporated, Fast Colors, 1983. I was born in 1983, so I think this was supposed to be my fabric. I thought I would do some cafe curtains in that front entryway space with this to be able to let the light in on the top but make curtains on the bottom. But unfortunately, I'm about three or four inches short of being able to cut this in half to make the curtains. So I'm thinking maybe like bench top covering or throw pillows for a bench, something like that. I've also mentioned that since being here in Nova Scotia that we haven't ventured that far to try to do some thrifting or antiquing or estate sales or anything because there really isn't as much of that here in Nova Scotia as when we were in Ontario. It's much easier to do there. I've been loving to peek every Friday when they reset a little barn sale down the road and I've been looking for old art books to be able to do a DIY to make some really expensive looking art decor for only a few cents, which is what I'm going to do for a DIY for the entryway. I found this book called Great American Illustrations. I'm Canadian, but we'll just go with it. And so in this book we found, Philip and I went through and we bookmarked quite a few paintings that were printed in this book that we really, really like. And before you hit unsubscribe because I'm going to cut a book, someone else already cut this book. And so I'm going to save elements of this book because it's not a complete book anymore. So someone already did the deed before I'm going to do it. You'll see in the end what it looks like. So we are going to use a couple of the art prints that are in this book. We're gonna turn them into kind of canvas-like prints to be able to put in the entryway. I'm gonna show you one that we both really like to kind of give you an idea of the vibe. I paid 50 cents for this book. You can see there's some beautiful artwork. This one happens to have a beautiful sky. 
and horses, of course. And so I'm going to turn this into some artwork that's gonna go in the front. So inspiration for some artwork vibe came from this thrifted book that we got. And I'm gonna to continue to keep looking for art books as I'm, or even just photograph books while I'm thrifting over the next couple of months because I want to turn our upstairs hallway foyer that's literally the size of a bedroom into an art gallery. So this is just gonna be my first test of many to be able to create a visual art gallery upstairs. And you know we planted an orchard with the boys and papa last year and i found this apple basket or apple picking kind of gathering basket at a yard sale about two weeks ago for four dollars so i want to hang this or have this in that room so that we can grab it off the shelf to take out to our orchard because hopefully by next year we're actually getting a production where we need to you know carry in some apples so just a few things that are kind of like thrifted elements that I did buy over the past couple of weeks. Other than the few elements that you see here, we are just using leftovers for what is around this property already. So I think I'm at a total of less than $5 here for this thrifted stuff that's gonna be the decor for that space. I'm excited that these are inspirations. Okay, I don't know if we can find some straight boards in here, but we need 13 of the straightest boards that we can find in here. It's some of them some of them look like the C, like literally the letter C. <laughs> this is rough milled lumber that we bought from a local homesteader so that we could do the fence boards. And since I ordered about probably eight extra sections of fence boards so that we would have options for sizes and stuff, I think we're okay to rob from this. Yeah, we definitely have extra. We're not gonna be short. No. I say that and then <laughs> three videos from now. Dang it, we're short! <laughs> but the entryway looks great. Yeah. The entryway is absolutely gorgeous, but the horses are running out on the road right now. Aww. We can see they're definitely not smooth one by threes or one by fours. They're actually kind of like one by three and a half ish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give or take. But some of them are really nice. So we're going to go through, sort through these. I think we need around 13, maybe 14. Give or take the size of some of them. But I think I can find some really nice ones out of here. We only have a 48 inch space that we have to fill on the wall and we're going for vertical. So I think what we do is you think we'll just sand them all. I think we should sand each one, cut it to size and then sand the next one. That way we don't end up spending time sanding more than we need to. I, I'm with you on that one. We'll do one at a time <laughs> okay. as we go down. Yeah. Plus when you're working with an old house, the house is never perfectly square. And so we might have to do some, a little like uh I don't know, constructive cutting and allowancing for the <laughs> wonkiness of the edge wall once we get to the other end. You never know. What kind of grits do we have? So I have some 40 grit. <laughs> I have, these were clearly floating around the garage. They look like they've seen better days. I have 40 grit, 60 grit, uh, and 180 grit. We kind of did a little bit of skipping around there. <laughs> but we're using what we have and I no longer have an orbital sander. When I was refinishing a lot of furniture when I was back in Ontario, I had a really nice orbital sander, but for some reason it didn't get here. Yeah, I don't know where, we had two orbital sanders. Yeah, yeah. and then, but anyways, we obviously picked up this little square regular palm sander since we've been here, so we're gonna use that. If I was doing furniture, I would definitely wanna just go grab an orbital, but this'll do for the boards. It doesn't matter too much. But when you don't have an orbital sander, you don't have the discs that come pre-cut for the shape of the bottom of the sander that are like Velcro-y. You have to cut it. So I'm just measuring off the one that is already there. So we're gonna go with the roughest grit first. I hope I cut these right. Actually really big in here. The way the design of the front entry, it's hard to get a good angle. Do you want to see this door frame or this door frame or the top or can't even film or you in film there? From this way, you got this door frame and that. You could film me from outside through the window. We really have beautiful bay windows at the front here and then we do have a window on the front of the door. So maybe I'll just step out the front door and film you this way. Right now I'm going to take these backpack hooks off of the wall. Good for nothing. They're adorable, but they're good for nothing. We literally threw them up in the middle of the winter so that if the boys came in, they just didn't drop their backpacks on the ground. It served a purpose over the winter, although this has been the most unglamorous, unwelcoming entrance ever. It was the first thing we saw when we walked into this house when we bought it. That's the first thing we see every day when we come in and it, it needs a little lifting. I knew from the listing the real estate agent said that this house had beautiful tin ceilings. 
So we do have beautiful tin ceilings. They just need some work. And if you remember, they have we have the same upper ceiling in the hallway. And then when we arrived here, I realized that the tin was all over the walls. So this mid little tiny entry here and then the whole front hallway is all the tin. Unfortunately, this was the only spot that was really damaged from the tin and didn't just need like cosmetic fixing. So I've kind of had a plan for this space, sort of. But I think since we've lived here now for a little while, we know really what would function in this space and that it's better to have something not as big in this little spot and then make use of this spot for the cabinet instead. And had you asked me two years ago when we moved in, I for sure would have put a cabinet where Philip is standing. So you learn what works in your house and what doesn't and how big the spaces are kind of as you go sometimes. Here we are now. Ready? Right now there's no feng shui in this house. <laughs> and by the time Elisha's done, we'll be feng shui in all day. <laughs> Living in Canada, we have four seasons. And so you absolutely 100% need to have an entryway closet to store extra hats, mitts, boots, coats, snow pants, rain jackets, rubber boots. Yeah you know, barn shoes. <laughs> we all have multiple sets because one morning you'll be out and you'll get your whole suit soaked because the weather changes so quickly. So it's imperative that we have a spot to put the things that we use every day that will be like, oh, you come in and put your coat and kick your shoes off. And then a spot where we can store all the things that we've taken off or that are not in season, which is why we want that big closet in the hallway. We ready to measure the first board. Once I took the bottom of the baseboard off, that little decorative piece, it means that that chunky six inch tall spot, or I would say five inch tall spot, it's actually the same depth now as the shiplap. So we can line that up. I think once we cut it, it looks like it's gonna be exactly the same width coming out. So we won't have anything second. And then I am gonna be putting something there anyways. So I think that was a good idea to take it off. And we're gonna go to this little rope detailing. I'm gonna take the shiplap just up to that spot. It's kind of like a crown molding. I'm never really in this space, but the more I stare at it, the more pain I realize that it needs. <laughs> I gotta just come in and skip past this spot and then get to the nice done rooms. Give me love, give me all your love. Oh, cause I want you. The house is okay. Normal. This is where the shelf's gonna go. Yeah, I think so. Okay, ready? Yeah, go for it. And so I put a screw here so that when our actual shelf is all the way across, there will not be any screw holes seen. I'm gonna have to wood fill any at the top. I'm gonna do it as close to the top as I can, and then one at the bottom. The bottom one you're never gonna see, and I'm gonna fill it and paint it anyway. Top wood fill and paint it. So we're gonna ignore the screw holes for now because I was gonna use the brad nailer. <laughs> shoot the brad nails through the tin and they're gonna come back at me so we're gonna use <laughs> safety first short girl problems <laughs> i need the ladder oh it's right here look at that you already nailed us two feet too short Now we can work off that one. One stilo. One stilo. Lisa, hey, you just want to dent in one of my shiplap. <laughs> Tell me how close you were. <laughs> really? You want to know? Aw. You're really close. Really close. We decided that we're going to cut the boards all the way across so we can kind of just sand in batches because we get on a roll doing one or the other. So Philip's going to cut. I'm just gonna go double check that that's gonna fit. And then I'll be back. That's right, because uh, cut once, measure twice. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I think you did that a little backwards. Aren't you supposed to measure twice, cut once, not cut once, measure twice? <laughs> Son of a Marital problems. <laughs> Marital problems. Yeah. <laughs> he taught me how to build. <laughs> yeah. There are not a lot of things that are more fun than working with Phil. The best will be when he comes out and then he realizes it's not the, the right cut. <laughs> that he should have measured twice and only cut once. What's the verdict? <laughs> Oh, it fits. Okay, good. <laughs> it's what I taught you. We always cut more than once, so we have lots of practice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's perfect. I just need to cut a little bit off the top here, <laughs> and then we're good to go, hon. I have missed working on our renovations while I've been resting over the past couple of weeks. Right. I mean, I've been resting. I've been Alicia resting. <laughs> Appalachian sunrise. Meets my skin Even with my eyes still closed I feel it coming Golden I'll call it home Golden 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 things We're going to be painting ship bob even though we sanded them and they're pretty smooth i think the best look is to just give it a really nice white paint and then we're gonna maybe have an accent wood shelf peg shelf so at least right now is just putting some wood filler in on the holes from the screws we figured we'd screw them in it's because we know we're rough and we throw our stuff at everything and <laughs> heavy backpacks no. Sometimes yeah. I just like to hang Phil up on the peg shelf and just let him chill for a little bit. This <laughs> time out. Time out. But you know what I mean, like when, you, when you're when you running and you gotta go somewhere, or you're running to the car and you just grab the jacket off of the hook and you just refit, you want it to be sturdy. I really wanted to add shiplap somewhere else on the main floor, just even a little accent of it because it would only make sense to put it in another spot on the main floor since we have it as the backsplash in the pantry. I think it'll be really timeless when we get that pantry finished up. And I like that it's kind of farmhousey in the pantry space for our home setting pantry. And since we do love shiplap, I didn't want to really do like a full room by adding it somewhere else in the main floor. So I think this is just a nice touch of it, help it be a little bit cohesive. I'm gonna keep it white and then add colors. That way we can change things out for the seasons or we can do things like that and not ever be really stuck on a color. We've really realized since we've been here that depending on where the lighting is coming in on the house, that's really hard to commit to any color on the wall. Colors you paint and then they just don't look right. You live with them for a short amount of time or even a, you know six months and then you realize that you really don't like the color. And because the seasons change here and we have different levels of sunlight throughout the year and stuff, it's also like a mood thing here in Nova Scotia as well. So we kind of just learning as we go here, but I think white is always fresh and white and bright and cheery white shiplap. Now that we have the shiplap drying with the putty, we're going to paint it. But before we do that, or while we're doing that, we wanna work on making a storage shelf to be able to put jackets or kind of hang anything on a peg shelf at the front door. We are gonna be building a coat closet just around the corner from where we're putting the shiplap in right now, which will store coats that are like off season or you know, we all have multiple jackets for different seasons. So this will just be like, you can quick come in, hang your coat up, hang your bag up or whatever and go. But I wanted something like thick and chunky. So we scoured to find some leftover wood that we used and we're gonna hopefully have enough to be able to make our shelf. I have leftover pegs from a pack I bought when we did the pantry peg shelf. And I love having the pegs rather than a wrought iron hook, especially for the look I'm looking for for this. And then I wanna have, instead of brackets holding this up, I wanna have sort of like more farmhouse style corbels. So I used the cardboard piece from the back of a tracing paper package and drew myself a shape. And the good thing about corbels is they can be absolutely any shape that you really want. So we're gonna cut the length of our shelves 
And then we're gonna trace this onto the scrap ends we're cutting off and use the scroll saw to cut out the shape that we made here. We're gonna just replicate it on the wood. If we cut this and we get the wrong measurement, we can't cut it again because we don't have enough wood since we're using scraps. So we should cut twice, I mean, <laughs> measure twice, cut once. Okay, so you hold that end because this is what kind of- Okay, I'll hold the dumb end. There is something in my shoe. Oh, what? in my shoe. I've had these shoes for a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they look like they've been through a battle. Okay, I don't know, maybe he fell out when I... Yikes. Fragile space In a single sail White rocky island You and I on the trail so now we should be able to make two corbels out of that loose piece that we just oh, yeah. cut off there. And then that one definitely will be big enough to do the second bottom part of the shelf because it's a little longer than that one. I'm excited to be making my own corbels because I've seen these online so many times over the years but never had a reason to make any for myself. So I think this is neat. I'm going to use my cardboard piece here and then we're gonna put my scroll saw to the test because this is a much thicker wood than I typically use. Pine straw tangerine tears, t shirts laid out like our grief throughout the years. They look so good. Show me, yeah, there's the that's the shape yeah, that we have. They kind of look like little horse heads if you look at them in a certain way, but... They do. I like the shape. I think they're cute. We're going to give a really, really good sand to the rest of the corbels and the two pieces of shelving. We got pegs. All right, rags. Early American stain. This is the same stain that we used for our kitchen island. And I had picked up this little, like, touch-up container just to make sure that we always had some on hand in case we ever needed it. So we're using that. Philip did an amazing job sanding the corbels. Oh, I'm like in love with the shape. So they're gonna sit, shelf top is gonna sit on top. They're gonna sit just inside. I think they're gonna be amazing. But we don't want anything to be like seepy or like goopy in between any of the seams of this gorgeous shelf since we took so much time sanding it. So we're gonna stain everything individually and then assemble everything together. My original idea was to do the dark blue gray color that we've been using but once we realized how beautiful this scrap would actually turn out when we cut it and sanded it I was like no no we need to stain these I don't want to like slather it with stain I want to just kind of gracefully put it on Philip is my master sander like when we do a live edge you spend hours sanding the live edge I get bored of it easily but he does such a good job Gunner's having a lovely day. He's finally decided that he wants to be buddies. Who's this? Who's this? He looks like Who's such this? a. You look like a shorty in there. Oh, that's gonna be so good. Do you think that the bench that I'm hoping to put underneath is laminate or do you think it's actually wood? I hope it's wood, cause if it's wood, then we can get a nice stain on it and it'll be cohesive with what we're doing. But if it's not, I think painting it will give us the same kind of look anyways. Yeah. And it's that we can pull it out of here and still get down and clean because obviously our boots and in here gets really Entry dirty. Way. Yeah. It's one of the things edible. one of the things I thought that I would want would sort of be like the cubby systems that we kind of built at the old house. But yeah. the boys are getting older and so I didn't really want the school 
days looking cubby systems. I wanted a little bit more of a welcoming and more of a family oriented entry. I didn't want it to look like a mud room. I wanted it to look like an entry. So I think that this is gonna be a nicer way. I'm almost wondering if that bench is not solid wood, I could maybe use that fabric to upholster the top of it. That would be cool too. Or if it is, I can is just it? make a couple of pocket pillows so they could sit there because that fabric is just gorgeous. I need to get all the paint out from between the pieces of shiplap there. You can see where some of the paint has kind of gooped in between. So I get that out and then I want to put my molding along the top and I can keep painting and making my way around, but we had to see what this was going to look like. Ready to see the new show? Oh, wow. I'm obsessed. Honestly, maybe my favorite DIY we've ever made. I think the corals turned out so nice. And this scrap wood stained so beautifully with the stain we used on our kitchen. The island is so beautiful because the stain color was just perfect with the wood beams that were already in our kitchen. So to tie in the wood and warm up the space with the wood just is like so dreamy when you walk in. I still need to do a little bit of the seams in between the shiplap. You can see along the top. That piece of trim I took off of the bottom down there, we put it along the top just to kind of give it a little bit of a molding. Needs another little coat of paint when I'm up there. I just... I'm so aware that this is not done around me. <laughs> There's a lot of more work to do right here, but I really just wanted to show you just what the shelf would look like with a few things on it. So I might rearrange it. I took one of the pieces of artwork that was in the book and just put it in a frame that we have. And this is actually a beautiful watercolor that one of our YouTube family members sent to us that I put in a frame. Just found some flowery weeds from the property to put into a thrifted vase. And of course our apple basket, which is one of our inspirations for this space is just to make it like homey and woodsy and you know, farmhousey. I think it's looking really cute. I think once we get the rest of the room like prepped, windows framed up, you know, the other DIYs that we're gonna put in this space is only gonna add more warmth to it. And I think we've gone a long way in two days. It did take us two days to get to this point, but I think it was definitely worth the work. I think I wanna make like a hundred more <laughs> shelves cause they're so pretty. And I really do like that we decided on the pegs instead of the actual like raw iron store-bought hooks that you can get because we've used those before and so this was just like a new vibe. Couple things. I really want to put some curtains in this space because this entryway, I'm going to show you where you see when you walk up. So if someone was visiting and they come up the stairs, you can see directly into the house. We don't have any window coverings on the front. And although we do live rurally and there really isn't very many people that come up to our door, you still want to have some privacy, but we love all of the natural light that comes in the front entryway. So I'm thinking since I had so much fun making my DIY cafe curtains that you saw in my recent Cricut video where I took a painter's drop cloth and I did the stenciling of the sunflowers in the bottom, they're like my new obsession. They changed the look of the back windows in my kitchen so drastically with the gold rods and the hooks and they just look adorable. So I think I'm going cafe curtains, but maybe taller on these ones because if I did them at the height like I did in the kitchen at like half of the size of the window, it's too low if someone was coming up from the actual step like you just saw. So I'm thinking of hanging them a little bit taller and then DIYing some cafe curtains. And I just so happen to have a tablecloth that I think the light would like come through but still has a seamed edge on it so it could be pretty easy to just put them together. And then this area here is missing something. So I have this. And by the grace of the decorating gods, it's 48 inches. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. It goes to the exact edge here and to the exact edge there of the shiplap. How can I not use this in this space? But the problem is, somebody likes a cup of tea, and every once in a while, I have set the cup of tea on this bench, which has resulted in a couple of heat marks on the top. So I either need to hope and pray that this is actually wood, which I think it is. But sometimes they trickery you, and it's not really wood once you start sanding. So I'm hoping that it will sand, and I can restain it, same color as this. But the dilemma is, then it's just kind of a stained bench. But I have this, fabric, 50 cents from the yard sale. So, do we upholster it? Stain the legs, upholster the top? Just make it into a little lumbar throw pillow and have some pillows there, because then it's not a permanent on the bench and I can change it whenever I feel like it. 
I need some help. <laughs> Tonight's project. Tackle the bench, make some cafe curtains, and we're gonna faux oil paint, make some artwork from our book. Let me know in the comment section, what do you think? Should I upholster it or just make pillows from it or scrap the fabric altogether? I mean, it's just laying on there, but. Yeah, that's nice. Could be really cute. Yeah, I like that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're new to our channel, hit subscribe. Stay tuned for tomorrow's episode because we have lots more to do in this small entryway and starting the large hallway. I love you and I will see you tomorrow.